Okay, so in this first video for Gravit Designer, we are going to take a look at how to start a new document and uh, take a look at the, the interface, the, the way that all the different components in Gravit uh, work and how they are related to each other. So the first thing you'll see in when you pop up Gravit Designer is what kind of document you want to create. It's asking you that question. And so for the most part, I have students use this section here, which is just to give it a size. If we're creating something that's going to be output on a laser cutter or something else, we might have a specific size in inches that we use. Um, you may use pixels if you are going to put something on the screen and it's not ever going to get printed out. So in this case though, I'm going to pick inches and I'm going to say something is something like 8 by 8 inches. And that's just really just to give us a start. Depending on what you're working with, you'll create a document uh, of a size that makes sense for you. So I hit create and what you'll see is the canvas. So this canvas is sized 8 by 8 inches. In fact, you can see it up there in the rulers. 8 inches by 8 inches. And uh, the, the rest of the components I think are important to understand in terms of how they're organized. So in addition to the canvas, you have on the left hand side what I'm going to call for now the layers panel. Now, there are actually three different panels here, but the Layers panel is what comes out by default. And I'll explain how that works in just a minute. You also have this section up here, which we'll call the Button Bar. This is where we get all the different tools to work with in Gravit Designer. And then finally, on the right-hand side, we have the Properties panel. And this Properties panel will look different depending on what we're working with. All right, so we're going to start off uh, with just very basic shapes. And over at the button bar, you will notice there's this uh, button here that might look different on your screen. It might say, it might start off with that square uh, icon. Uh, it just depends on the last shape that you were using. And there are different shapes that you can try out. So I'm going to pick something like a rectangle. I click on it. And then anywhere I'm at on my canvas, I can click and hold and drag out a rectangle. Okay. If I want to drag out a perfect rectangle, then I would click and hold my shift key on my keyboard while I'm dragging out, and it constrains the shape to a perfect square. All right. Now, I have two squares on the screen. If I want to bring out something like a circle, I would pick an ellipse and drag it out this way, again, using shift if I wanted to, to make it a perfect circle. So as I'm selecting these different shapes, you'll notice that the properties panel changes. And that's because the properties panel is based on the shape that you've selected. For example, on this first rectangle that I made, if I go over here to the fills section, I can click on the current gray color right there, and I can change the color to something else. I have lots of different choices here. Okay. If I click on the next shape, you'll notice that it's the gray default color again. I can click on that and pick another color. Okay, so now I have three different shapes of three different colors. The other thing you can do is, in addition to filling the shape, you can add a border. Now the borders, uh, by default, there aren't, there is no border. But if you go to the borders section and you hit the plus symbol, it adds a single one point border in black around that shape. Okay, so now with these three shapes, you'll take a look and you'll notice that on the left hand side, remember we called this the layers panel, you'll see that the, each of these shapes represents a single layer. And currently this ellipse, this one, is on the top layer. What that means is if I put it over here, you'll see that it appears on top of these other two shapes. The next one is the yellow square. It's a, the reason it is in second uh, position is because it was made before this one, but it was made after that one. So again, if I, were to, if I want to prove that to myself, I can show that each one of these has its own layer. And in fact, if I wanted to change which layer a shape was on, I can pick it up and move it. Okay, so now I've moved the bottom rectangle to the top of our stack. And so each of these basic shapes, as you uh, modify each one, you notice that they've got 
different little dots on the corners and the sides. These are called handles. And so you can take a handle and with a single handle you can control and adjust the size and shape of your particular shape that you brought out. You'll also notice that you have a rotation handle at the top that allows you to then adjust the rotational angle of any given shape. Um, going back to what we said earlier with the shift key to keep a square a perfect square or to keep a circle a perfect circle, if you use your shift key while you're rotating, you'll notice that you can stop at very specific angles. So if I wanted to make sure that it was horizontal or if I wanted to make sure it was vertical, I can use my shift key to help me stay at very specific angles. All right, so now that I have these uh, shapes all in layers and I've got each one with different properties, it's time to learn how to combine them to make new shapes out of the existing default shapes. So basic shapes are how we get started. We, from our basic shapes, we can create what we call compound shapes or more complex shapes. And so the first thing I'm going to show you up here on the top right, I have a document that was previously opened. Um, this is a fish. And what you'll notice is, you know, this is, we don't have a shape up here under our basic shapes to create a fish. So we have to combine our shapes in order to make something new. And what I would like for you to do actually is if you wanted to pause the video here to determine how many shapes you think this fish is made of. Okay, and so in looking at this fish, you'll see that it is made of a number of different shapes. If I click on one, you can see that I've got these three different triangles. You'll also notice that I have two ellipses. And then I've got this sort of football looking shape. And this is actually a compound shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our original that we've been working on. And I'm going to show you that you can take two existing shapes. Let's take that one and this one. And maybe I'm going to line them up so they're kind of the same height at this point. And if I select both of them, meaning I take my mouse and drag over both shapes, I don't have to select all the way around them. All I have to do is select within them, and I've got both. Then I can use this new tool up here called the Compound Shape Tool. All right, And the Compound Shape Tool can do four different things. It can create a union of those two shapes. And if I do that, you'll see that now they are one combined shape. And if you look over at the Layers panel, you'll realize that the layers now indicate two shapes together, creating this compound shape. You'll also notice, I'm going to undo this for a second, and I'm going to use my Undo tool up there on the top left. You'll also notice that it took the color and properties of the layer below the bottom layer. So if I selected these two and I hit Union, it takes the yellow shape in this particular scenario. So in addition to being able to create a union, you can also take, uh, you can also do a subtraction, an intersection, and a difference. And I'm going to show you those three now. So if I undo this shape here, and with the two individual shapes still selected, I can instead pick subtract. And what subtract is going to do is this. So it took the uppermost shape, or the front shape, and it cut it out from the bottom shape. All right, if I undo that and I pick intersection, intersection will just leave the space that the, the two different shapes overlapped. And lastly, I can show you what a, a f the fourth compound shape looks like, and that's difference. So if I even took this compound shape, our existing compound shape, and placed it with our final shape over here, I select them both and then choose Difference. And that basically selects everything that wasn't overlapped. So that's the basics of compound shapes. In our next video, we'll take a look at how you make these compound shapes into paths, which really then opens up a whole new world of design.